Okay, so I was asked this question uh, of a teacher or instructor who's helping uh, children uh, with uh, self-harm tendencies. You know, they I've, I've met quite a lot in 12-step groups. They, If you look at their arms, they've got a series of cuts up their arm, um, uh, uh, cut marks up their arm on both sides. And um, that's quite regular as I go to places with uh, um, especially women with eating disorders where um, um, they there you know a lot of them have gone down to the level of consciousness where they're cutting themselves um so I'd say quite a lot I can say quite a lot on this stuff it's based on well there's two stuff why do people do that and what's happening with people who are just cutting themselves and two if you're witnessing this or a teacher or something what can I do to help them um, so there, there's a lot of a lot of stuff in there. Well, you see, you, you understand from uh, uh, Dr. Hawkins' work, there's levels of consciousness, and also the, the God the God consciousness levels are very much. Um, it's like mystical fields of the miraculous, where things heal, where everything goes, um, where there's a divine healing, divine miracles, and divine orchestration happening in a realm of of miracles and beauty. So that's as you get as the ego disappears and dissolves into nothing, and that the the light of consciousness, the infinite light. Well, if you think everything that is a belief is a negative belief, and if you've got hundreds of limiting beliefs in your head, you're not going to get many miracles. The light's going to be cut off completely. You'll be in absolute darkness, just seeing the limiting ideas crowding out any light at all. So when you're getting to the place where you're just cutting yourself nonstop, or you're thinking of killing everyone else because you don't like anyone else, uh, you're getting to towards the lowest levels of consciousness, you know, which is I'll kill myself or I'll kill other people, which is more or less the same thing. It doesn't really matter which way you go. Uh, but um, uh, and and the field becomes reversed, whereas you know the miraculous is life supporting, and and the world is full of light and love and oneness. Um, the other place where the density of the beliefs of the ego is so dense that all the light of God is cut off, and there's a dark, it's like the um, it's like a, a negative field of consciousness, an orchestrating field of anti-life, and actually the the in addiction this happens where there's actually an attraction to that which is destructive, like you'll get. Uh, people who starve themselves almost to death or eat themselves almost to death or drink themselves almost to death or will gamble the, the, themselves almost. Or you get you get also codependency issues where people will make another person their god and then feel suicidal if that person doesn't behave the way they want to. If you don't behave the way I want to, I'm going to kill myself. You know, so um, um, they lay that on the other person. So this is all, you know, or it might end up in, in a, a dark room. I'd say, you know, that that is the orchestration and um, things like being possessed by um, energies, uh, which can lead you into the most insane uh, behaviors. Now, I had that myself, you know, one of my addictions was, um, uh, I laugh at the stories that uh, I was probably possessed by this, uh, this voice in my head, um, was telling me basically to kill myself, you know, and I, I was just letting this voice run me. So here's the funny story. I think it's really funny. Um, I got kidney failure and the doctor goes to me, you've got to avoid these high potassium foods or you get a heart attack. And at the top of the list was bananas. Like, you know, the doctor's saying, I'm a food addict. He's saying, don't eat bananas, you get a heart attack, you know. <laughs> so as soon as they let me out of the hospital the voice told me like buy a big bag of bananas and eat them I just binge out bananas because the doctor just told you definitely don't eat bananas you'll get a heart attack so there the voice of the voice said and it just ran me so I just went out straight beeline for a huge bag of you know I knew a marketplace where you can buy for one pound like a huge bag maybe 30 bananas very ripe I thought, I'm going to eat those bananas, you know, and the voice told me to forget what the doctor said, you're invincible, just eat the bananas, nothing's going to happen to you. So I ate all the bananas, you know, um, and uh, which is insane, isn't it? It's suicidal. It's like trying to kill yourself. And, um, you know, they had taken, you know, I forgot, they took a blood test earlier the day. Uh, no, after I'd eaten the bananas, they took another blood test. And, and I got the phone call 
and it's quite hilarious. I got a phone call from A and E, accident and emergency in the hospital. Like they're really real, they're like you're in real trouble. They said we just saw your blood test and you're about to have a heart attack. I, we want you to come straight into accident and emergency. Uh, you know, I, uh, you know, you've got life-threatening levels of uh, potassium in your blood. You know, you're at risk of a heart attack and imminent death. And the voice was saying, like, you're not going to die. I mean, this is just so annoying. You have to go into hospital now. And so I just was really angry that I had to go into hospital. And um, it's a mystical story. I'll, I'll end it. Sorry, I do get go off talking sometimes. But I went to hospital. And, you know, when you're about to have a heart attack, they don't give you like a little tiny injection. They have a, a needle which is supposed to go all the way up your arm towards your heart. So it's the longest needle I'd ever seen in my whole life. It's like the length of your arm and it's really fat. So they can they can stick the needle in your arm all the way up to the top of your, up to your neck so they can get to your heart. And I saw this needle, I go, you could, they're gonna put that into me to try and stop me getting a heart attack. I mean, it's not just your tiny little piddly needles. So you take a small blood test and I go, so I had to think of Hawkins, you know, like having his, his surgery without any anesthetic and then go, you don't resist, don't resist as they plunge the needle, zero resistance. And so I was, I, you know, I did that. I, funny, I didn't do that. I think that was a miracle of grace. I was willing to experience it 100% without resistance. And as the needle went in, I lost consciousness. I went off into bliss and, and I started to fall over. And they thought, they didn't know, they thought I must be diabetic or something. I didn't have enough sugar in my blood. Uh, so they woke me up, which was very annoying sort of slapping me around and said look we've got some sugary drinks drink these sugary drinks and I'm a compulsive over eaters so I love sugar uh so <laughs> they wake me up but it, it worked what Hawkins said don't resist if they're going to cut you open don't <laughs> don't resist is my is my thing just to be willing to experience it 100% with no resistance sorry I did go off so sorry I, did, I went off on a tangent so what do you do all right so it's everything is levels of consciousness. Um, if I'm witnessing other people suffering, um, I, you know, if they, you know, this is also there has to be a level of humility, of what's called um, uh, I, I'll call it karmic permission, or if the soul sometimes the soul, you're not allowed to intervene, intervene, no matter how much spiritual work you do to try and save another window you'll be blocked spiritually because there's a higher purpose that you as another person are not allowed to um, intervene for the soul's purpose is necessary for them. Even though um, I think uh, in many, I think for of Course in Miracles students, in a lot of cases, you'll do spiritual work and uh, there will be a noticeable effect in others. Uh, but don't, I wouldn't say that, um, You've got to also understand that there's a higher purpose in everything that happens to everyone. Um, that there, there is a there's a reason, and sometimes for certain individuals, like for myself, I had to go to the brink of death. If I was probably for me, if people kept saving me from the brink of death, I wouldn't have really surrendered. You know, uh, I'd just be like stopped from getting to the point where I get the direct experience myself. So. Uh, so sometimes you're not allowed to, and sometimes it's not even in the best interests for you just to hold them off the bottom, because that would be for their best sometimes. But we say that in 12-step groups. You know, sometimes um, we'll say, are you ready to work the spiritual program? You're willing to go to the, the, no. Okay, well, go out and do some more research and find out whether drinking some more will work for you. So they need, to, sometimes they need to do that to get the pain before they 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 have the humility in themselves to to call on divinity, um, but um, the um, the few things one from Hawkins and one from Dr. Hugh Len. So Dr. Hugh Len, and this is the thing you can do with the Course in Miracles, or you can do with the Observer, uh, self inquiry, is you can clear in yourself what you're witnessing out there in others, and and wash it out of your consciousness, or you can cancel it out. Or you can forgive it out until that no longer exists for you of what's happening in the other person. Dr. Hugh Len did this 
He's a mystic, very powerful, uh, powerful and connected uh, man in divinity. And he just forgave all the prisoners in a Hawaiian prison cell. And they all got well and they closed the prison down. So that was like absolutely, um, you know, very inspiring stuff. Uh, I believe he didn't meet the people. He just got their prison files and forgave them. And they all got well and then they closed the prison down. And that's awesome. So he, uh, he calls it clearing the data. So you see what's the pain in them and you clear it out of yourself, you know, uh, as if the, the, what, what they're having is just an aspect of what you have. And if you clean it out of yourself so it doesn't exist in you, uh, if, it's, if it's allowed, it may not exist in them afterwards as well. Um, so that's the thing you do. Uh, how do you do that? You can cancel it out. You can forgive it out. Or you can use the observer, self-inquiry. Okay, this girl is suffering and I feel bad because this girl is suffering and cutting herself and torturing herself. I feel really bad. I can't help her. Okay, well, what's the me that feels bad for the girl? Where is that me? Let me have a look for the me that feels bad about these girls. What, what, is, the, what is observing the me that's feeling bad? Okay, and... Okay, and if I go to the observer of the me, does the me exist? Does the girl's suffering exist any longer? So if, if, if you cease to exist, their suffering and the thoughts about them suffering will cease to exist. The other thing to do to clear is when you're in front of them, you may really get, a, your ego may get hooked into what, that thing. Like, I feel really sorry for these girls. How can I save them? But then you can go like, who's the me that wants to save them? What, and what's witnessing the me that wants to save them? And in, in the observer, is there a me that exists that wants to save them? Okay. Also, if there's a witnessing of girls that are in distress, then is there a you, is there a you that's witnessing the girls that are in distress? And then what's observing the you that's witnessing the distress? And does the distress still exist in that observer? So you can clear it out. Uh, and that will, you're, you'll go up the levels of consciousness, you'll see them differently, and or you may not see them any suffering at all. Um, and then I'd relate that to what Dr. Hawkins says. So um, if the girls are in a very low level of consciousness, and you go into a low level of consciousness by seeing their suffering, then you've got people in a low level of, of suffering consciousness, and you're in a low level of consciousness. So there's not much light in that room. But if you disappear it or you transcend it until your ego doesn't exist, as Hawkins says, like one enlightened person is counterbalancing the negativity of millions. So if you put Buddha in front of people who are suicidal, the, probably in the capital, there's very much that happened with TM meditation. They got 2000 people, I think, in Boston to meditate every day. And the crime rate went down, I think, 40 percent. So imagine if you had Buddha in the absolute enlightenment and bliss, you know, the negativity of other people's egos will, will dramatically drop. There'll be immense healing. What if you had Jesus Christ in the room? You know, can such negativity, it's very hard for other people's egos to hold on to such uh, negativity with such light. So you have to be the light. How are you going to raise yourself into the light is going to be the healing. But if you're like in your ego, distressed by their egos being in distress, then that's not really useful because you're not very, you're not much of a radiator of light and they need you to be a channel of light. So you need to be off into the realms of non-duality, bliss, peace, and seeing love and wholeness uh, and seeing beyond. You see, like, can the witnesser see other bodies in distress? It does the witnesses see that the other bodies are real? Uh, you know, um, if you saw, if a Buddha looked at you, or Jesus Christ looked at you, or Ramana looked at you, you know, I, I'll share my experience of meeting Hawkins. You know, I went off to him, and someone guided me. Just tell him how do you how do you um, how do you free yourself from kidney failure and gout? You know, I had all this stuff I was suffering from, my ego was suffering from, and I said this to Hawkins. And he laughed, you know, he, la he laughed. At he laughed at me as I just said, I've got kidney failure, gout and everything. And he was laughing from the place of non-duality. It was immense power. As he laughed, he just said, like, just, 
pray for a miracle, pray, pray for divine order, divine healing, and divine orchestration. And he said, just keep doing that, and that will work. Or if it doesn't work, I'll meet you on the other side. And he laughed. Don't worry about it, he said to me. But, you know, he was in the place of non-duality, and I connected to him. And I laughed as well. I couldn't stop laughing because it wasn't serious, because I was off in his place in a, in a dimension where suffering doesn't exist. You don't hook into it. So as he said, it wasn't the words. He put me into that place that he was in where none of this is real. So I, mean, I share my own experience. If, if anyone is suffering and they manage to get into the presence of someone who's off in there, huge miracles happen, more than just um, someone in their head trying to say, look, don't worry about this, try and, try and not do that. That won't have that much power to intervene. So, um, so on the question, um, yeah, I mean, the things I would say to the girls is 12-step groups, 12-step, uh, be in as many 12-step groups as possible, because 12-step groups have the vibration of unconditional love. The more hours you can spend in a week in a 12-step group, even if you don't listen or if you're drunk on the floor, it doesn't matter, that energy field will start to heal you because the level of consciousness of the groups are very powerful. Just tell them, if you don't like it, you don't want to be there, just go to as many groups as you can and stuff will happen for you. The group energy will support them. Um, and you clearing your own stuff and what you see of them and cancelling or blessing them will also help the girls. Uh, but uh, the biggest help is for you to clear that your distress and your ego uh, around the situation will bring the highest light to them when you're in their presence. So that that's um, that's what I'd say. It's a lovely question. I could speak endlessly.